Hi, everyone. I have a very great guest today. Her name is Violetta Znorkowski, and we are recently acquainted. I was just a guest on her beautiful podcast, and we just hit it off and had such a great conversation, and I was very happy to invite her on to the Make Time for Success podcast. We just, a couple of minutes ago, talked about a book that I am currently listening to, and she will tell you the story of how she's read the book twice already, and um, it was a very meaningful book to her as well. The book is called The Untethered Soul, and I thought I would mention that at the top of the interview because I invited Violet onto the show to help us understand emotion regulation, energy regulation, and emotional mastery. And I think she's a perfect guest to do that. So Violet, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. What a beautiful introduction. I'm really glad to be here. I'm so glad to have you here and to know you. Please give our listeners a better sense of who you are, what lights you up, what you're doing professionally as well. Mm, what a beautiful invitation. I'll start with what lights me up. I love being out in nature, snowboarding, rock climbing, doing these adventurous things. And in the last couple of years, I also really enjoy resting <laughs> and reading non um, reading fiction books. So I've always been a nonfiction reader until I noticed that I was starting to burn out from acquiring so much information in my mind. And in the last few years, I've really um, began to reignite my love for just getting lost in a story, getting lost in a narrative. And those are the ways I spend my time now, either out in nature, um, moving my body, pushing myself to my mental and physical limits, or just complete opposite, flopping on the couch, reading a book <laughs> and resting. <laughs> so those I finally have been able to bring those two opposites together after all these years. And as um, Christine mentioned, my name is Violetta. You're more than welcome to call me Violet. And I am the founder and facilitator at Expand and Impact, which is a developing school of emotional mastery, emotional intelligence, and mindfulness and self-leadership. So what all of those words mean is essentially um, I work with high-achieving, ambitious, motivated women who have a thirst for life, thirst for knowledge, and I share the tools and the skills that were not taught in school, but that are really essential in helping us develop a deeper sense of emotional grounding, steadiness, to unlock, uh, unlock our inherent confidence, to use our voice so that we can have the impact and inner peace that we desire. I've never had an example in my life of like a happy, relaxed, and successful woman. And... It's my mission now to share those skills and tools to really help women level up in their leadership, however that looks like for them, and create success in all areas of their life because we deserve it and we're worthy of it. Am I missing beautiful. a part of your question? <laughs> no, that, that was beautiful. I think that that covers a lot. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for giving us that introduction. I know when we first met on your podcast, before that, our, our pre-chat, you mentioned that you were very interested in uh, women's equality issues. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that or a, a bunch about that? Because it's it's an issue that's very near and dear to my heart. I've always been, from a very young age, very focused on issues of gender equality, gender parity. And I would love to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah, I'd love to share more because that is... Um, the mission behind the mission of Expand and Impact is to close the gender gap from the inside out by starting with ourselves and really coming into communion with who we are, what we want, and how we can best express ourselves in the world. And my interest and passion in gender equity or equity in general and how to actually embody it, not just say the words and fight to change the systems, but how can we embody it in our own lives? And where are we internalizing oppression compared to the oppression in our systems, I think is a very important and missing piece when working towards a more equitable world. 
And for me personally, um, before I decided to pave my own way even more and start Expand and Impact, I come from over a decade working in the outdoor education and experiential learning industry. So to many people, they don't even know what this means. When I was in university, I didn't even know this could be a major, that you can study it. And essentially, I spent over 10 years um, working in developing world countries and living and working in different countries professionally and guiding both youth and adults on these adventures, right? So we would be hiking together in the Cambodian jungle. We would be sleeping in hammocks um, in Thailand. We would be living in remote indigenous communities in Southeast Asia or Peru and um, helping with community service. And I was a feminine leader, a very young one. I started um, training in this field when I was 19 in university as a passion to get me outdoors. And it coincidentally turned into um, a career of almost 10 years. And I'm very fortunate to have been able to um, been paid to travel, which is so many people's dream, and to see these parts of the world and communities that many people don't ever get to interact with. And not only was I working in places where women had very few rights, I was one of the only women that looked like me in the industry. I wasn't, you know, like if there's a video attached to this, like I'm quite feminine, I'm quite petite, I'm 5'5". Five five, and there was all these years I had to, I noticed that there was like this inherent fight in me that I didn't realize wasn't natural. I needed to fight to prove myself over and over again because the environments that I would be working in were really high risk. So we were experiencing these adventures, but along with that came the experience of managing your emotions, processing them, developing leadership skills, learning to communicate better from an integri from integrity and to really understand um, what cultural immersion is and have an understanding of other people's cultures and people. And looking the way I did, I didn't get that approval or that invitation easily. Like I noticed my white male counterparts specifically. I felt like I always needed to prove myself over and over again and that all of my experience was never enough. And people would take one look at me and I would just know that they're questioning, can I keep you safe? Can she keep me safe? Does she have the skills to do that? And being, you know, a female in these countries where women don't have many rights, there was no room for me to struggle. There was no room for me to falter. And the weight of the responsibility that I set on myself and that I had in my job um, made me start to crumble. And I noticed that there was a lot of limiting beliefs and lack of skills on my end that were creating this separation between um, being able to show up as myself with genuine confidence without this like forceful energy attached and that there were real systems in place that weren't allowing me to just show up with my skill set without having to prove it, without having to earn my place to be there or without having to um, be better than everyone around me just to be able to stand equally on a platform together. And that really inspired me to leave the industry and also start Expand and Impact where we can learn the tools and the skills that I didn't have at the time. And especially with um, gender inequality, there are a lot of microaggressions that we have normalized. And that needs to change, yes, but also we need to be equipped to navigate those moments without losing ourselves in it, without making it mean something about us so that we can access deeper levels of connection, compassion, creativity, um, and our genius of innovation to be able to change and influence these systems. So when we're coming from a place of force, when we're coming from a place of fear, when we're coming from a place of striving and having to prove that we are good enough, we are worthy, that energy in terms of how much we're able to actually sustain changing systems, to communicate our needs, to question authority, to question the systems that we're in, it doesn't translate because we end up burning out and we take all of the burden on our own shoulders. But when we can learn to stay in a regulated place, to handle and manage our stress better, to 
let's create a bit of a separation, some breathing room between the microaggressions, between the systems that are actually not allowing equity. And we can come from it from a clear place. The quality of our decisions begins to change. The quality of our voice begins to change and the quality of our confidence and influence in these spaces. Wow. I am so glad I'm a podcaster in this very moment because I had a very extensive conversation with Violet earlier when she was interviewing me and I did get to know her a bit, but I did not hear any of this part of her story. And that's understandable because we only had so much time and she's been through a lot even since that time when she was working in the outdoor industry. And I just feel like now I understand you and your voice and your mission so much more because you went through such a difficult experience moment to moment while also having to take care of your own safety and the safety of those in your care and that you've woven. I think you're a terrific weaver of stories and of meaning, but you've used your past experience to weave a wonderful story and mission for yourself in the current day. So thank you so much for sharing that and being the woman that you knew you always were. Uh, I'm thinking Mm -hmm. even as I'm watching you and listening to you share that early experience of being young, being 5'5", being white, being in the jungle um, and being in a role of authority, needing to navigate other authority systems that you were really put to the test and that you knew you had the voice inside, even if there were forces opposing you or trying to suppress your voice. So thank you so much for coming out and doing even more. I I just really appreciate you and your story. Oh, thank you so much for the invitation. And um, as far as the voice comes, um, voice is concerned, it's amazing how easily as women we lose confidence in our voice because I naturally always had the feedback that I was confident and there was this fire about me. And if you saw me at the end of my time in this industry and after all of the stress and pressure and situations that I had to meet head on, I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror anymore. And I lost a lot of confidence and faith that what I had to say was enough, that it was worthy, that I I was worthy of taking up space because I was questioned. My presence was questioned so many times. My skill set was questioned so many times. And I began to notice the what's missing in this equation. Because of course, yes, there's the greater system, but then there's also our inner system. And what do we do with the information, with the injustices that we notice? Do we get caught in the anger and the rage? Or can we stand back as an observer, recognize that there is injustice, and clearly and consciously do something about it in a way that's true for us because not all of us are activists. I'm not the one, you know, with the, um, like in Congress, like vetoing laws. That's not my, um, area of genius, genius or area of expertise. I do it in a different way. And it took me a while to find how I can best contribute to this. And I love working with people. I love listening to their stories and helping them navigate and build the skill set of navigating their internal world that I never had the privilege of learning before I had to. And it's so essential. So please, could you take us through what you did to have to learn to recover your voice after having it be suppressed? Can you repeat the last um, sentence? I just cut out on my end. Okay, no worries. Could you take us through the steps of what you needed to do and learn and perhaps go through to reclaim your voice? I'll be honest, I am still on the journey of fully reclaiming it. And I would be surprised if there was a time where that ended because I am a believer of being on this path is an ever-expanding evolution of self and there is no end goal. And with each new challenge that I put myself in, my voice will become clearer and clearer with um, how I change and how life changes and how my circumstances change. But to answer you more directly, 
I essentially um, really burnt out. And it was a lot of my external circumstances, you know, um, a lack of time for myself, no room for hobbies, no support, these tangible things. But it was also a lot of my internal world adding to the burnout, my own insecurity, my own questioning of the self, my own um, or the pressure that I put on myself and where that was coming from and the motivations and how I was just showing up like energetically and emotionally and not being able to process my emotions. I realized later I was suppressing them and anything that you suppress eventually starts to bubble up like a volcano unless we learn to be with the discomfort, be with the pain. And that's exactly how I began to recover my voice and my own self-trust. I think the one of the key foundations of being able to use your voice with confidence is really connecting with the part of ourselves that is us and learning to trust our own impulses, learning to tell the difference between am I showing up in this way as a defense mechanism from a wounding, from a part that's hurt? Or is this genuinely what I believe, what I stand for? And can I communicate that with integrity, with compassion, and with authority while considering the other without, you know, being forceful in my opinion and my stance? Can I collaborate and commune using my voice as a strength and bringing in the other and considering the other? So it was really a journey of learning to trust myself again learning to trust my impulses and really understanding the difference, the subtle, subtle difference in my body of where my communication was coming from, where the words I was speaking were coming from. Were they protecting me? Were they coming from fear? Or was this genuinely something I believed in that was worth speaking up for and communicating or addressing? That's a beautiful description. And I think it's a practice with ourselves to really tune in and not be distracted by fear and to be patient with fear and to not run in the other direction from fear and to make sure that we stay present in all the different ways, physically present, emotionally present, spiritually present, mentally present, and any of those factors can go haywire for any reason, right? It might be the weather. It might be the tone of somebody's voice. It might be some historical wound that we have within ourselves. And I think that's why I mentioned the book, The Untethered Soul to Violetta at the beginning of our conversation, because Michael Singer, the author, talks just as Violetta just did, saying, you know, can we know that fear exists, but can we still stay centered, observing the fear rather than being overcome or overtaken or frightened by the fear or distracted by the fear? And I highly recommend the book to everyone. And I think Violet would agree about that one. All right. Could you tell us about the nervous system and what you know about regulating it, what happens when the nervous system is going haywire, what strategies you tell your clients and comrades to use when the nervous system feels like it's running the show rather than supporting the show? That is a very big question. Very big. And I'll do my best to answer it um, succinctly. (laughs) One of the first things is to build an intimacy with noticing the different sensations in your body and your nervous system. So it's a skill in itself to be able to identify how fear feels for you in the body, in your system, and to be able to develop the level of awareness where you can track where you are in your everyday life and in your body And start to notice how your environment and your internal dialogue and world is starting to affect how you're feeling. Because a lot of our triggers, they come on really strong, really fast. But they don't, actually. That's just how it presents to us. And it could be a snap reaction, a snap trigger. 
But generally, or usually, there's subtle cues that we can notice within ourselves along the way, depending on the situations we find ourselves in, of our window, our window of tolerance beginning to close, which means we have less capacity to deal with stress than we did maybe in the morning when we were well rested and um, full of energy and haven't had to deal with anyone or anything yet. You know, I, I think many people will find that by the end of the day, they're starting to feel fatigued. Maybe they're more on edge. Maybe they're starting to be a bit more snappy or judgmental. Maybe that inner critic is louder. And that's, that's um, a response as well from your nervous system. So let me take a step back and explain what the nervous system is. It is a continuous loop of information from your mind to your body, and it is triggered by internal and external stimulus. So any memories that our body holds that we may not have conscious awareness of, and also scanning our environment and the conversations that we hear, the people that we see, where we are in our environment, the temperature, the colors around us, all of these sudden cues that we don't have conscious awareness around to decide if we are safe. And how does safety look for us? Are we safe to be ourselves? Are we safe to connect? What does that look like? How does that feel? And so the work that I do with the nervous system is part working with the body. So it's an, I mainly take a somatic approach, but it's integrated. I work with the mind and the body and also um, exploring the identities that we hold, exploring the parts, the wounded parts that may hold that fear, the parts that hold the ambition and the excitement, all of these aspects of our psyche that make up our personality and all of our experiences so that we can begin to notice how they are triggered off within our nervous system as we are moving through our life. And one of the key aspects or so, like, or dialogue that I notice is a regulated nervous system means that you're calm. That is misinformation, actually. A regulated nervous system means that you are equipped, you have the skills and the capacity to come back to yourself, to come back into a state of homeostasis. It's not staying in a state of calm or presence or grounding all of the time. It's having the flexibility in your mind and in your body to be triggered by a situation, to be in adversity and to make your way back home to yourself without getting stuck in those situations. So getting stuck in a hypervigilant state or getting stuck in a freeze state where you're procrastinating, you can't get out of bed, and you need two weeks to recover. So all of this stems from the inside and our nervous system is constantly scanning our environment and filtering through all of our memories and experiences to decide how we are going to meet this moment and what is going to happen. I love that. I think that's the most beautiful and thorough and complete description of what's going on with our nervous system that I've ever heard. So thank you for that education. And I'm just filtering through my own recent experiences and marveling at the body and the nervous system for the beautiful genius system that it is because it's holding not just our fear triggers, but also our joy triggers and our all the other versions of triggers that we have, the things that make us who we are, the things that make up our history in our relationships, the movies that we've seen, which is the trigger that I just had the oh. other day while watching Indiana Jones in the movie theater. It was a pleasant memory, but I was just astonished at how I could really bring myself back to how many decades ago when I saw the original movie. That's what my body was doing. But thank you for explaining the links and the protective aspect and how it isn't just all about calm, but it, it's about being able to be flexible in this way, in a, I think, loving and compassionate way to yourself and to your nervous system as well. So thank you for that beautiful description. You mentioned you work somatically. Could you describe that and what that means to people like me who might not know exactly what you mean? Sure. So soma means the body, within the body. And that's what somatics is. So we do a lot of intellectualizing in our life. We spend a lot of time leading and thinking with our intellectual brains and our minds, trying to understand ourselves, the world, through different theories, different modalities. And sometimes, not always, 
sometimes that actually can be a way of bypassing our current experience and really meeting the moment within ourselves. So one of the things that we spoke about before we hit play is how I noticed that I was, um, or at the beginning of this conversation, how I started to really love fiction books because I was burning out from reading nonfiction because my mind was constantly absorbing information and learning and learning and psychoanalyzing myself, others, the world, and really on this like personal development healing train. But when we move to our body, we can put that mind at rest. We can put it at ease and we can actually access our subconscious in a more intimate way by noticing the sensations of the present moment. So a lot of times we get stuck in the narrative, we get stuck in the in the intellectualization and we wonder why haven't I been able to create the changes in a lasting and sustainable way that I've been working so hard towards. So a lot of my clients are doing the right thing. They're they know a lot about themselves. They have been doing personal development, they have been to therapy. They are very self-aware. And yet their emotional state hasn't shifted in a sustainable way where they are feeling like they can tap into that inner steadiness in a way that is quick enough. I'm very mindful to use the word quick, but right now I'm at a loss for words because it isn't always a quick process, but the more in tune we get with the sensations of our body, the quicker it is. So for example, instead of wondering why we are anxious and trying to put a band-aid solution on our anxiety and even like going to yoga, I'm anxious, so I'm going to go to a yoga class or I'm going to do some breath work or, you know, any, anything that you do to manage your anxiety, what would happen if you began to notice the sensation of anxiety in your body? To create a bit of a separation from I am anxious to I am experiencing anxiety. Maybe you start to notice some tension. And can you grow your capacity to be with that discomfort of anxiety instead of running away from it? And ironically, When we lead with our mind and try to problem solve, because that's what humans do, we're so good at completing the story and problem solving, instead of trying to problem solve, which essentially a lot of the time perpetuates this looping sensation, the emotion that we're wanting to get away from, if we learn to just be with it, ironically, it begins to dissolve quicker. And an emotion Um, research shows that only lasts for about 90 seconds energetically in the body, right? So any um, experience that we've had where we still feel that emotional reactivation, where we think we've let it go, but we haven't because we keep looping back, looping back, that is showing us that we haven't completed the cycle of that emotion within the body, which is somatics. So really beginning to notice the sensation notice cues of hunger. We have become so disconnected that we don't even notice that we are hungry or or tired until we are starving and exhausted. So really growing that awareness to be with the moment and explore how we are doing in the body and meeting any discomfort or even excitement. Because to be able to grow your capacity to hold discomfort simultaneously grows your capacity to hold and be comfortable with joy. There are two aspects to every emotion and sensation. There is the shadow of, you know, the shadow of joy, and then there's fear or despair. And to expand our human experience and what emotional baseline that we have to be able to come back into calm, happy, and centered space means that we are able to simultaneously hold the opposite of those things. And we do that with the body, not the mind. I love this. And I love your description of everything. So thank you for sharing your genius. I'm so glad to know someone who is operating within her zone of genius. And I was reflecting as you were talking throughout today's conversation about the level of trust you have in your own voice. So I just wanted Mm. to feed that back to you, give that as a gift and really say thank you for developing your voice, for strengthening your voice, for going through what you needed to, to become a leader and teacher of 
this art of being connected with your own self and confidence and voice. Oh, thank you so much. What a beautiful reflection. I'm still practicing receiving compliments, so I'm going to take a moment and receive that. (laughs) It's still not natural. (laughs) Well, I love it. I love giving compliments and I give them when I see them. So um, so thanks again for being here. Please let us know about the workshop that you do with your clients and let us know everything we need to know. Yeah, excellent. So I I feel like I've began to touch on that a little bit. So the upcoming workshop is called Let It Go Immersive, and it is a combination of somatic tools and working with our thoughts and any stressful situations or emotions that we keep revisiting. You know those moments where you feel like you've let something go, And then it gets reactivated a little bit later. Or maybe you're in a conflict and you're really wanting to stay um, stay neutral to be able to resolve this conflict with a loved one or someone better. But we get so caught up in our mind and it starts to ruminate and we just can't let go of the frustration or the disappointment of the situation. And to feel clear and at ease in how we make decisions, how we trust ourselves, and to stay connected, right? So even a big part of regulation, coming back into regulation is coming back into connection. So a lot of conflicts that we have when we are stuck in our minds with the stressful thoughts, we start to become disconnected, not only from ourselves, but from the people around us, which impacts, of course, our communion with other people, romantic, family relationships, all sites, or all, all relationships. We are, we are um, biologically designed for relationships. So that is naturally our biggest trigger. So it's really learning a very effective process to inquire and release some of these tri- triggers to stressful thoughts that we hold. And I've personally been immersed in this specific process for over two years. It was a part of one of my trainings and uh, my trainer essentially encouraged us to immerse ourselves so deeply in it that it's become a habit, something I do in my mind on repeat every single day that allows me to experience deeper clarity, deeper mental and emotional freedom, and to really tap into that aspect of myself that is able to handle conflict, that is able to make those decisions with clarity and confidence, and to create more of a separation between myself and anything that's stressing me out, triggering me out, and frustrating me because naturally we're human and we are never going to get rid of these qualities, but we can learn to manage them so they don't feel all-consuming. And that's what this workshop is about. It teaches a very simple process that you will be able to do on your own, in your own life by the end of it. And I invite you to let it go immersive if this is something that is speaking to you right now. That is wonderful. And thanks for the great description. I, with Violet, have created a link for that workshop. And Violet has kindly offered the listeners of the Make Time for Success podcast a 10% discount for the workshop. And we've created the link, maketimeforsuccesspodcast.com slash let it go. Again, maketimeforsuccesspodcast.com slash let it go. And of course you can direct a message Violet for any other information that you want to get from her about the workshop or to connect with her. Could you let us know what your Instagram handle is as well? So people can give you some feedback and connect with you on Instagram. Yeah, I would really love that. Expand and impact is where you can find me on all of the social platforms, except LinkedIn. LinkedIn will be my name, Violetta Znarkowski, if that's your jam. So expand underscore and underscore impact. Terrific. I feel like I need to ask you one more question, and that Please. is about the book, The Untethered Soul. And could you just, I don't know if it's a question, but could you let our listeners know what your connection with the book used to be? Mm, yeah, I feel like we need to we need to talk about this before we, we end this episode because we started so beautifully um, saying how it's inspired both of us. <laughs> so we need to, we need to touch on that. Um, I actually read this book. I was given it this book when I was 19 years old by a roommate and I was in college and it completely changed my thinking about myself and the world. And what I remember created the biggest shift when I was reading it at the time is this idea of how much we live in our interpretations 
and how much suffering that really causes. So there's a difference between interpreting our reality versus observing it. When we can observe it without the judgment, we're able to tap into that connection, that self-trust, that peace, that autonomy, that clarity that we all aspire, that courage, those beautiful adjectives that we all want but somehow keep grasping for. How do we actually sustainably cultivate that within ourselves and create an access where we can tap onto it on demand? And the interpretation is the judgment. Um, I use this example where I think he used it in the book. It was like you're walking down the street and you you see someone attractive and your automatic thought is they're not going to find me attractive. They don't like me. How do you know? It's impossible for you to know that unless you ask what this person thinks of you, of your physical characteristics. They don't even know you. They might have not even seen you. So really creating that awareness around the how language causes our own suffering in a way and makes us interpret our surroundings. So judgment, when we're judging others or when we feel like they're judging ourselves, when we say someone left me or abandoned me, can you know that to be true 100% for sure? And that was, um, yeah, the book that reset the trajectory of everything, of my whole mindset, of my whole journey at that time. And I've read it twice since. And I like to read it every couple of years to see what new information jumps out at me that maybe I wasn't ready to receive earlier. And I've, and I've actually started gifting it to people too. So all my oh. friends, get a book, of, get a copy of this book. <laughs> That's beautiful. I will now, I feel inspired to share my own story with the book. I heard about Please. the author on a podcast about 15 years ago, and I thought his story was interesting, what he said was interesting, and I remembered, okay, let's tuck away the title of this book and make sure we read this book. And 15 years later, it finally rose to the top of my book list. I do not know why I waited so long, especially after I was interested in it so many years ago, but I will back up what Violet beautifully summarized about the book. It really is so instructive about everything energy, everything consciousness, how our thoughts relate with our energy, all the things that we all are either actively or passively thinking about during the course of every day. It's all in this little book. So it's The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. It is our gift to our listeners today. And Violet, you are a gift. Thank you so much oh. for giving us your time and your energy and your wisdom today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really loved this conversation and being here. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's all for today. Everyone, please subscribe to the show, rate the show, review the show. Remember to DM Violet with a loving message and any feedback you have about what she taught us today. And please come visit us again next week when the next episode drops. Take care, everyone. Bye.